Now this is coming right off the back of those 4K series where complexity made some moves, Ooh. made some waves, and I think we're still feeling that ripple effect into the 2K here today as we hop on board with two teams that are lesser known as the early stages of these open bracket usually are. I'm a big fan of Pure Delight, but unfortunately he's one of the first players to hit the respawn screen. Watch for him to bounce back because he is a competitor. Yeah, our two teams here in this first round, some unfamiliar foes, but that's why we want to focus and uh, feature them here on the broadcast is what it's all about. Living yeah. rent free versus chain chop and magic. The OG nostalgic Mario fan in me loves that team name. I love it too. They got a logo. They're ready to roll and everything. Pure Delight's also uh, a streamer. He hosts his own tournaments as well. So a lot to love about these teams in front of us as the early lead goes to live and rent free. But watch out. Chain Chop on the brink of a triple cap. A does get reset, but they're right back in the fight. And it's none other than Pure Delight himself with the shock rifle, with the takedown, looking for the double kill and making the smart play to preserve his life. Massive opening sandbox control here for pure delight and chain chop but the score is still tied it's a highly contested match in fact live and rent free despite not having the power up or the power weapon here in that shock rifle is doing really well all things considered now though a switching into control here for chain chop as they look to continue dominating with that shock rifle a nice little bit of a, a lead flip over here for Chain Chop. Pure Delight rotates from B all the way to A, still holding on to that high ground position. There's a player at the top of control, but three players from Living Rent Free over here at the B side. And uh, Pure Delight, he finds the takedown onto Striker, rotates back away, nearly threads the needle with that shot for the double. Pure Delight doing a great job to stay alive, but oh, it didn't take long for a caster's curse to go down as he goes down too. Opening up with three kills. That's a good start there for Chain Shop, and it has them up by a two to one margin. And oh, wow, that huge pin win on A, the double kill as well for Dommy Domes. Looking more like Mommy Domes there as he secures A for their team. What? <laughs> Did you say Dommy Domes looking more like Mommy Domes? Is that what I just. <laughs> yeah, that was Mommy Vibes. Did you not see how he clutched up and just secured it for the squad? Like, that was incredible. <laughs> to try to recover from that. It's too early in the broadcast where he got a caster curse. He already got some uh, the wild commentary as the fight goes down on the A. It looks like Devlin gets a takedown, traded back out. Now Absent is on the chase. The Living Red Free have the numbers. They have three players. The back back from Bento Stark and Double he is just kill. rolling through with the melees at the ready. Takes down two opponents. Living Red Free are about 20 seconds down, but quickly looking to flip that lead back that they had early in the game. Ah, and I caught a quick glimpse of Benjo's POV. He sit at eight and three, and I believe also sitting at home at his setup on mouse and keyboard. We got to see a lot of that in yesterday's BTB tournament, continuing to see the parity, not only between these teams, the HCS Magic, but between the input devices in controller versus mouse and keyboard. Love seeing that rivalry continue to develop. So honestly, the discussion of mouse and keyboard versus controller was the first casting discussion we ever had a year ago at the Kansas City Boot Camp. So the fact that we're still talking about input devices a year later, you know, it's, it's, it's a big part of the story because the play style differs depending on how you choose to play the game. Uh, there will be there will come a day where a world championship grand finals stage has a mouse and keyboard player. It may not be this year, it may not be next, but I just feel like it's uh, it's going that direction, and you love to see players like Benjo Stark take advantage of the newly minted mouse and keyboard and put it to good use and lead their team here, continuing uh, to do so at nine and five. With that newly imp uh, newly minted input. I think it goes back to December where that, that buff to mouse and keyboard, a little bit of an in increase in the aim assist, and now it's Benjo Stark who's putting it to work. Plasma pistol at the ready, fires off a full charge. Dami ducks out of the way of that. A little bit of a double team, and I think that Dami's gonna escape with his life with the active camo. This is a big turnaround of events here for Chain Chop as they are now 40 seconds down. And it might've been faded. I think Benjo might be on controller, but he was looking quick, nasty with it at the start. And honestly, that's a credit to Banjo to even have a glimpse of a potential MNK player. You usually don't see that from the likes of, I'm trying to think of a player, Carmea. Carmea is a great example of a player that plays yeah, on controller, yeah. but he plays so fast you wouldn't know it. Benjo, looking a little similar to that. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, very, very, 
very rapid back on board with Benjo once again going for the melee kills that's at least three that we've seen from Benjo Stark not afraid to get up close and personal with the melee takedowns Chain Chop are eating their way back chomping their way back into this game only 10 seconds down and absent wins a nice pivotal 1v1 in order to maintain the majority of zones and it's just a three second difference between the two teams a trade of kills happens at bottom mid and absent will take that trade because it keeps the zone control and now the lead back to chain chop yeah and here we are five minutes in i know chain chop going uh three four down there but this has felt neck and neck from the very beginning. Neither of these two teams are able to get any separation. Look at this. As soon as Chain Shop gets to the hundreds, Living Red Free says, hey, we want to get into the 100 point club as well. But that B control point is highly contested still at the halfway mark for Chain Shop. Got to get somebody over there for uh, Living Red Free to reset it. But no, Chain Shop makes a huge play securing B. Huge adjustment, huge clutch securing of that B stronghold as we see about halfway across the scoreboard just a few seconds away from hitting that halfway mark at 125 dami doms at the back dami domes rather is taken down in fact three go down absent feeling absent of some teammates right now last alive on the team and puts it to good work by taking a kill hopefully clearing a path for that to camo but it's devlin who breaks through to the camo will vic for the kill of his own that camo might just be the difference in who takes the lead heading into the second half of this match. Living rent free with two sequences where they won the numbers engagement, taking three, four down for Chain Chomp back to back. That was what was able to open up the scoring for them once again. But look at this. Absent takes it right back. That is massive. You got the numbers advantage for yeah. living rent free here for, I'd say, the last minute or so. But it's Chain Chomp who continues the scoring and building on this lead. Yeah, if you look at the stats, three players from Live and Rent Free are in double digits, but Chain Chomp is the team with the lead. Even if they're down in slays, they're finding their way to those objectives. Live and Rent Free are ready to take back. And it has been quite the tug of war match between these two teams. Back and forth on the lead as Pure Delight is taken down by Striker. A quick, decisive strike on that kill. And I keep watching the scoreboard intently because it is anybody's game. This fight at A might flip the lead back over. Dami Domes is fighting for his life. He secured one kill. He waited for backup, but it's the double kill. Once again, Benjo starts 14 slays to his name. And ooh, barely misses on the sticky grenade as he's taken down. Chain Chomp are looking for a triple cap. And this might be the first time we see some separation between two teams as it's it's felt like a slayer magic and that it's only what, eight kills behind eight seconds behind there hasn't really been that much separation in this match we're finally starting to see that here from chain chomp though as they go up by 30 into the 160s approaching that 200 point threshold with a good lock on a and b your delight showing some good patience here just holding on to a the melee trade and look at these like preventative defensive rounds of fire you can do that when you have the two zones. You can just hold that line, and that's what PD is trying to do. Get the trade on that reversal, but across the map, two players go down. Little Vic is singled out. Four down for Chain Chop. Wow, four down again for Chain Chop. Now the question is, can Red Free take advantage and optimize the slays they're getting? Despite the team one for Chain Chop, they're about to get C and continue scoring. This has been the difference so far in this game. There hasn't been much separation, but now we're finding it in the form of that scoreboard. 50 point advantage for Chain Chop and a 50 point advantage in just playing their playing the playing the efficient, right? They're not slaying out. Yeah. They don't have the numbers advantage more often than not, but they have the positioning on the map as we see it four go down again for change up magic surely this lead cannot hold the triple cap and living rent free they might not have taken the lead back just yet but back to back team wipes gives them this triple cap inching back into that lead only 20 seconds down neither team has crossed that 200 point mark yet it is devlin with one round left in the shock rifle he's gonna try to flee with his life maybe burn the last round ducks into low ground some great maneuvering to try to hide regen the health striker gets a kill that's gonna give a little bit more space and oh no chain chop once again three go down benjo stark is quickly rotating to a and pd is the last alive he captured b by himself against the whole living red free roster and that's been that's been the difference right there he said three go down for chain shop but then i looked down i glanced out the scoreboard thinking okay surely a trip cap's coming now we're gonna see that but before that chain shop was able to get b like how did they get b they barely even had a, a soul on the map it, it's almost like their ai uh was still in the hill scoring for them because nobody was alive for chain shop that's that's kept them in the game but they have 
lost the lead and now you see that chain chomp off of you know two three waves of, of being team wiped how are they still in this game three points down it's been that objective control they've been locking it down pd is eyeing the active camo that could be the swing right now as chain chomp take back the lead camo five seconds away pd needs to stay alive there's a player at low ground it's benjo stark the kill leader or previous kill leader is taken down and now it's chain chop with a round of slays crossing that 200 point mark i cannot believe chain chop was the first team to pass the 200 point mark because you look at the scoreboard magic it's about a 20 slay disparity between these two teams that is unbelievable we're looking at almost five team wipes advantage for living red free yeah. but the scoreboard doesn't reflect the same you might worry about it a little bit in game two slayer but right now when it's strongholds it's all about the objective control and that is chain chomp all day they're reaching that home stretch 18 seconds away from taking this game one win it's not over yet living red free is capping on to be and now absent is pushing striker weakened by a teammate is gonna leave that as an easy cleanup and absent now in a 1v1 as benjo start getting into the fight just in time deals out that damage before absent able to regen the shield yeah and there from absent you really got to see that persistent gameplay that's really been their moniker uh for chain chomp they're not out slaying this live and rent free team but they're playing with a little bit more grit and you saw that there from yeah. absent when he pushed into a took down one wasn't able to take out the other but it's that style for chain chomp that has them up here in the late goings of this one and Lil Vic, knowing that the grenades were coming in, risked his life to get the reset on the hill. Five seconds left, and a trade of kills is a perfect win scenario for Chain Chomp. One second, time runs out. Incredible slaying disparity, but objective control wins out the day in game one, and it's Chain Chomp with the first map on the board. Plus 17. That is the wow. slay disparity between the two teams. I did the mental math quickly in my head uh as that one ended but that is unbelievable and you think maybe magic that ah it's just because we're here in the early goings this is you know this is what you expect from the 71 versus 58 no 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 no. this is one of my favorite things about watching the 71 versus the 58 seed is that you get to see the exact same thing you'd see between the five versus six seed when one team doesn't play objective efficiency they do not win the game sometimes regardless of their phase play regardless if they slay up by 30 it does not matter in halo infinite you have to play the team game to win and survive slow-mo on the fight pd crouching below the bullets and then lines up the melee trade when you're trying to defend a zone trade is a win you keep your points ticking and absent here getting one of the final captures on the board but when we go back to remembering the big moments in that game it was multiple times where we saw absent as the last player alive yeah. getting a trade kill before being taken down pd pure delight is the last player alive capping b capping. before yeah. his teammates can re respawn and get back in the fight and it was those clutch moments that gave that win to chain chomp and it's almost to show you that the stats don't tell the whole story because if you're looking at the kda of the the players you would have thought this would have gone the other way for sure. Yeah, it was almost like Chain Chomp would go all four down and then you'd hear that villainous laugh. <laughs> I've just reached my final form. And then they'd come off spawn and absolutely dominate through efficiency, not necessarily in slays, but through efficiency and positioning to take down this living rent free roster. And hey, this Chain Chomp roster, they're gonna be living rent free if they earn the 2-0 sweep here as we send ourselves to a game two Streets Slayer. The, the evil laugh is a little too convincing, Mikowski. Yeah. I, I don't know. A little, a little bit eerie, a little Bowser-esque maybe there for a minute. I don't know. It was a little bit much. Picture, 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 picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to talk about Absent with the rockets. You can't. You can't. What a song. What a song. Uh, Absent does fire off both rockets, but like his name is Absent of any kills off of them. Best case, uh, the silver lining, I guess, in the play there is not giving over the rockets, but like we saw in game number one, it's all living red free on the slate. Uh, and this is going to be so interesting if it goes the way that game one went, because you'd expect uh, almost like a, a spectacular, let's be real, uh, despite living red free being down 1 0 in this series. Uh, I'm expecting a spectacular. You can see this early score, score results, seven to two off suit for living rent free. This is not the start they wanted, but it's the start we expected after that slaying performance we saw last game. 
I mean, if you're gonna be an objective team or a slayer team, I think ultimately you you want to be the objective team, right? If you're just playing the numbers, there's more objective modes in a series than than there are team slayer. But uh, I think that just leaves that much more pressure on Live and Rent Free to take this game to Slayer to get them back in the series, and then from there they can worry about game three and the rest of the matchup. They have that seven point lead early on, but a couple of slays here from Chain Chop, the flank from Benjo Stark, so dangerous and game. Game one opens up game two with a killing spree. I love that disengagement there from Brent Benjo Stark, realizing that with that kill, he had himself in a plus one scenario. And for, for any team, that's all you're looking for is a plus one, a Ooh. net positive outcome. As now Benjo puts two on the board, make it three Double as he's chip. lighting his t opponents up with the Sentinel Beam. See a little bit of Spartan esque plays here. Do you remember the 20 and 0 streak that Spartan had here on streets? Benjo with already seven early on in the game. Nice clean takedowns and the nine point lead primarily due to Benjo and his slays. The Rockets are in play, but they're on the ground at the base of B stairs. Either team that goes after them is going to risk giving up their life, but Dami Domes finds a way to get a clean rocket pickup. Nice patience here, doesn't need to burn them, and this could be a catalyst for Chain Chomp to get back in the match. Misses on the first rocket, second rocket is dropped because Striker gets the double kill. Striker's looking for the triple, he's gonna find that remaining rocket. Oh, blind fire going out into the shroud screen. That's not gonna take anybody out, but oh man, you brought up that Spartan. How did Spartan drop 20 and 0 a, a rampage against complexity? That was, I still, uh, th that, that one sticks with me here. Anytime we go to streets, I, I see Spartan's face. Uh, in like almost transparent mode, right? He's just like a god hovering above my my head. But here we have. I thought he would get like a neon sign, like the ramen sign, the pizza sign. There needs to be a Spartan rampage. A hundred percent, one thousand percent. Sparty owns streets, and for now, living rent free. Well, this is where they stay. They, they they got an apartment at the at the streets, and they're living rent free here today. Up seven on Chain Chomp. Three go down there for living rent free though. So for an opportunity now for Chain Chomp to take advantage of their numbers. Down by two team wipes. Down now by seven. They can bring this back. This is the chance for Chain Chomp to get a breakthrough. And Dami Domes gets a nice kill. Five and six currently. We're not just looking at the kill count, but the assist count is something that I would be also concerned about. Chain Chomp need to find a way to get that team fire back in place. Currently only at five assists, and it's 21 on the side of living rent free. Absolutely. Yeah, you, that's a great st stat that really does uh, go beyond just the stat sheet. It really does meta metamorphize itself onto the field of play. The stats, the assist, absolutely the difference maker here is this one's close, Magic. Only a six kill game now, so you're Dami Domes here. You get rockets. And oh, he's he 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 inside of the trap screen. Almost kill. like a beacon of grenade damage. Uh, he goes down with the rockets in that shroud screen. Now rockets at tires. That's going to be a, a crucial point on the map to control as it looks like Devlin makes away with it and an opportunity to continue to build on this lead. Dami Domes went for the rocket pickup, kind of fumbled it, doubled back a second too soon, and then that ended up costing his life as now Devlin double rolls kill. through with the double kill. A crucial turning point for living rent free to continue dominating in this match. And Devlin finds three players from Chain Chop off of the spawn. And he's taking the team fire. A nice little crossfire there from Little Vic from that commando, uh, sorry, the, the bulldog window. That's the kind of crossfire that Chain Chomp needs, but I'm wondering, is it too little too late? They're still down by 12 points as Pure Delight rounds the corner. He's gonna find one or two players in front as the 1v1, and that's the assist! Ashton gets the double kill, and we're seeing some team fire finally! Yeah, at that time, down by 12, but the 12 I'm most concerned with, Magic, is that death count. Approaching the 12 count for three of the four players here for Chain Chomp, so that really tells me now that they need to slow things down. They need to try to not necessarily park the bus, but really try to manipulate the map, maybe earn a couple pieces of the sandbox. Stalker, for example, shotgun, for example. But it doesn't look to be enough as shot. those are in the hands of Benjo and live and rent free, but it's still not enough to crack into this lead. It's, it's, it's still a massive, it's a 12 kill lead despite some weapon control here for this chain chomp roster. So that has got to be really frustrating when you look at the end result. Yeah, and even while you're talking about it, two players on Chain Chomp do hit that 12 death mark. It's unfortunate 
turnaround for them and it looks like this game is all but over as striker hits the back smack after assisting on the kill before that what was just a 12 point game has been blown wide open 17 point lead and you can tell from the pace that living rent free are not gonna let chain chomp slow down this game they are full sending it to the finish line as they tie up the series and that last second kill kept the stake tacular from going across your screen and into the headphones of these competitors as living rent free and chain chomp are now tied 1-1 so in game it's the tale of two tapes game one objective efficiency for chain chomp wins them that recharge strongholds and then in game two it's the slaying prowess which we also saw in game one for living rent free so now going into this decisive game three because remember we're in best of threes until i want to say round yeah. three or four this is going to be it so uh, I, I think we're in best of five Okay, these are all best of five. Even better. All right, great. So this is the question. You have three objectives, like you uh, teed up earlier in this uh, in this match, Magic. We have three objectives, two slayers. It just looks to me at this rate that this chain shop squad is going to win the three objectives, and then the slayers are going to go to live and rent free. But if that's the case, that's a three-two win for chain shop. Can live and rent free turn all of these slays that we're seeing on screen? into objective time in game three if they can yes. they should win the series well, well here's here's that i think that you pose the exact question that we want because there has been you know we talk about objective we talk about slayers and these two teams are really showing us that divide between the two strategies between the two play styles but when you're talking about objective modes certain modes lean more towards the slayer advantage and i have to think that argyle ctf is maybe even top of the list maybe oh, yeah. Imperium ctf is up there as well because you need multiple rounds of slays just to move that flag across the map just to get that capture so if there's a map in this series that the slaying is going to lead to objective control it's got to be this game three yeah you think that and it's you know you think that the slaying would lead to that but so we know that this live and rent free roster they're going to be able to get the slays to pull a flag but it really does take objective efficiency. it's really beyond just slaying out and wiping a team you really need to be efficient on argyle you've got three checkpoints at the 33 66 and even 99 percent mark so yeah. if you're living rent free and you're skipping that process if you're just thinking you could just slay through that process it's not going to work out for you then you're going to get upset again by chain chomp here so and then on the flip yeah. side chain chomp they're objectively efficient but do they have the slays and the team wipes in them to even pull a flag against this living rip free roster so a lot of a lot of plates up in the air for both of these two teams as we descend into game three excited about this one we're gonna relive a couple of the replays from game one and two and uh i'm just uh, feeling a little bit spoiled because a lot of times when we're in the, the round one here of like this, this open bracket of the 2k you'll see some pretty quick 3-0 wins right now we have twice the brawl on our hands we're guaranteed to go to a game four and uh that's what we love give these players the chance to spotlight their skills spotlight their teamwork and uh obviously all eight players have been putting in the time to get them to this point it's going to be hard to predict a winner from the series. And I think that game three as that swing game is going to tell us a lot of information. Which players, Mikowski, pick one from each squad. Which players we keep an eye out for in this game three? Oh, I'm looking for my favorite. I'm looking for Dami Domes on this chain chomp roster i saw him pop off individually uh in some of those moments he needs to uh pop off and then kind of like snowball that together with some teamwork here i'm looking for dami domes and teammates uh, so i'm kind of cheating on that answer a little bit and then on the uh, on the right side i'm looking for benjo Stark. consistently been that top slayer for this live and rent free roster i'm gonna look for him to really open up those poles and flag runs here for his squad on argyle players to keep your eyes out on as we head into this game three each team with one win under their belts means we're guaranteed to go at least to a game four on this map we have a lot of utility to work for as you can see here on the b-roll we got both snipers we might see some counter snipes some dueling snipers and don't forget that active camo spawning at top mid could be crucial to getting a sneaky flag run across the map or at least working your way into the opponent's face. Uh, we also have Grapple, we got Repulsor. There's so much opportunity for some cheeky plays. Part of what I love about watching and casting Argyle. Yeah, I think Argyle is a map that's grown on the community. I know there's still there's still a lot that uh, so. don't don't necessarily like it, right? They, they, they That first impression is stuck through, but I think for the most part, this map has grown on a lot of us and you start to see the strategy develop. It's, it's sped up too. I think that's 
uh, help increase the enjoyability of this map as we see Benjo Stark. Speak, speaking of speeding up, he's already to the other side of the map. He's already got camo. He's already got two. And it's a great start here for this live and rent free roster. Two, two on each side, but Benjo has the camo. And look at this, not going directly to the flag, wanting to clear out the back of the base. And it's Dami versus Benjo, two players that you said to watch out for, but the team fire that helped. It was absent and even pure delight over there at the <laughs> sniper elbow. All three players from Chain Chop maybe learning a lesson from last game where uh, the lack of assist really cost them the game because we're seeing a little bit more team fire. But they are forced to play some team fire as they're pushed all the way into the back of their base, maybe finding a little bit of room to breathe. Flag out here, absent. We're going to push up, really dominate this mid map, open up the lanes with that control of the battle rifle and the top side of the map as he goes high. Everyone on that chain chomp roster low is absent. Looks to gather some intel, finds Ooh. the back of Striker, strikes the back of Striker, but doesn't get the back smack. Striker going to have a chance to potentially stay alive. Keep Killing that sniper, but no, spree. it goes into the hands of absent. And now he has five shots to work with. Finds the strike onto Striker, but the back smack was absent. Is so that what you're trying to say? Comes out with the kill and the sniper at the end of the day. Three players from Live and Rent Free around the corner, and it's going to be too much for absent. Maybe a little bit overextended because that sniper is changing hands over to Live and Rent Free, and it's it's Striker who is striking back, bouncing back off that takedown, and look how quickly making his way across the map. Runs into a little opposition, but nothing that a frag grenade can't handle. And watching, look at that plasma grenade, predicting the spawn and maybe also denying that quick sniper pickup. Yeah, and I actually really like this run here. 2-2 two, two in the feed, but living rent free. Their slaves were on the chain chomp side of the map. That's why we saw a pullout. That's why we see a potential camo for Benjo, but no, it does not burn. Instead, Benjo sl uh, and Slang Wayne, they get burnt. Pure Delight stays alive and Where? should have a camo to work Where's with as well, right? Where's your, your AI scan? It's like he's looking for it. Scan for it, PD, please. I think it dropped on that mid platform there, unless another teammate came through and, and picked it up instead. But PD gets that double kill, and now it's some kills going through for Chain Chop. Answered back, though. Dami hits the body shot, but it's not going to be enough. And it was teammate Lil Vic. As PD got the double kill, he allowed the teammate to grab the camo. So even though we might have been a little bit lost, it looks like Chain Chop knew exactly what they were doing. Oh, Benjo, look at He's trying to shoot some shots out. I believe those are some feeler shots, but he's not feeling a thing. Cold, cold, cold. You're not warm at all. He's, little Vic continues the sneaky pull, but no, he goes down. Now this is trouble for Chain Chop. They used a lot of resources, all four, in fact. And now Dev has a strong pullout, but a fumble, a little fumble here. And that's going to open up this lane to shoot him down as Dami opens up, spawns with that lane instead. So it just goes to show again yeah. how efficient you have to be running flags here on Argyle. One team wipe oh is simply not enough. And, and the flights are like mirrored. They're both at mid map and both teams are trying to play this hybrid offense and defense at the same time. And I think it's Chain Chomp coming out with a numbers advantage in that scenario. Both flags are still in play, looking like a little bit of a flag duel. Devlin holding that mid ground. Little Vic on the chase. Striker's left at one shot. Striker dodges the headshot and Little Vic is traded back out. Living rent free have the flag. Where's the opponent flag? It looks like Dami. So it, both flags on the opposite <laughs> sides of the map, and we might see a little bit of standstill because in five seconds, active camo, snipers spawning in. Unlikely that either team will push until they have some of that power of control. And there's just something about these goal line standoffs, Magic, that seem to last for hours as the, I believe yeah. the last time we had a situation like this, this went on for five plus minutes in sudden death overtime. So. Yes. Buckle in. You might even be able to use the restroom or grab a snack in the meantime, because this one is likely to stay 0-0 for the next couple minutes as both of these two teams fight for map control and possession of the sandbox. As we see Benjo landing a body shot, that's going to give him damage numbers and the numbers that he's looking for as Dami Domes goes down. That's going to be two down. Benjo opening up a good push here for living rent free, starting to feel the pressure. A great live here from Benjo Stark. Eight slays to his name, but also a few assists with those body shots. But there's two players, make it three players from Chain Chomp. Now on defense, Benjo Stark trying to play offensive, but solo is going to be too much for him to handle. 
And I just want to draw attention back to that assist column because it has been so telling in the early stages of this game as well as last game. Living Rent Free were dominating with assists in game number two, but now Chain Chomp with a little bit of an advantage. And not only that, but it's an even slate disparity. I believe dead even right. now between these two teams. So we're five minutes in. That's enough time to really uh, get a, a few eye tests in, a few eye quizzes, if you will. As it looks like Lemon Rent Free, or excuse me, Chain Ooh. Chomp, despite getting heavily outslid in, outslid in game one, is up to it here in game three. And that could be a big reason why they go up 1 0 in the series. But this is a standoff situation with both flags on the goal line that is going to require you to not only be efficient, but also slay out. Look at the grapple. Look at the grapple play. Benjo Stark, I thought he was going to rotate around the back of the base, but instead he jumps up to the balcony. Little Vic is here on the flag. Benjo has the sniper still two uses of the grapple. He was about to just jump off the side of the map and then grapple around, but he wasn't given the opportunity. Chain Chomp adjusted on the defensive side. Little Vic is playing the role of holding on to that flag, giving the call house that allows teammates like Absent to move up to the mid map. Dami picks up a kill as well. Two down for living rent free, and I believe active camo is in play yet again. Absent not taking a, a pit stop. His full sending, and Striker no doesn't know. Striker doesn't know. No Absent way. starts right behind, gets the flag reset. And now Chain Chomp should get this capture as Lil Vic goes in for the dog. That's a 1-0 lead for Chain Chomp. Absent sneaks into the refrigerator like a little kid at 3 a.m., steals some milk and cookies, and has his team up 1-0. Argyle CTF, a map where one score could be all you need to win. So Chain Chomp in a really good position here in the driver's seat to potentially take this 2-1 series lead. But there's still plenty of time. Five minutes left. Does Live and Rent Free have another push in them? But again, because of the, the way Argyle works, they really only have maybe four, five pushes left. But they go three, four down. This is not good. Chain Chomp, at the very least, is going to have mid-map control. I would have loved to see Lil Vic use the grapple to kind of push the issue onto that fight, but instead it was that trust in a teammate. Dami had the angle, so I love that comms coming through for Chain Chomp, evident in the way they're playing. Lil Vic grapples oh. the flag all the way from the platform to mid map, oh. saving that grapple instead of aggressively extending to get a kill. Rotates the flag, gets the reset. It's absent versus death. Wow. When absent wins out. I don't know if he's going to get traded out, though. There's two players behind. He's getting around the corner, keeping that flag alive. And there's two more players from Chain Chomp ready to fill in right behind. Oh, we are starting to see some plays made here. Back and forth we go like a merry-go-round. And if another round of scores goes in for Chain Chomp, up 2-0 with four minutes left, that could be the insurance score that puts the finishing touches as three go down again for Chain Chomp. Living rent free. Now we're starting to see what we saw in game one. They have the slaves, but do they have the efficiency to... At the very least, pull a flag is 3-4 down again, but Dami Domes off his back foot. Playing some great defense. Playing some great defense, but it's not going to be enough. Living rent free. They saw that grapple pull to bottom mid, and all of a sudden, wow. they said we might not be in the driver's seat, but no time for Chain Chomp to take a victory lap. Living rent free are right back in this game. Looks like this flag is going to get reset. Both flags back at the return. An incredible response from Chain Chomp with numbers down. Absent looking to push up there and I like this. I like the aggressiveness. I like the game plan I like the strategy here from chain chomp using offense as a great defense as they've now stolen the sniper for living rent free That's gonna be a that's, a that's an action that helps you live rent free in your opponent's head when you just jump off with their sniper like that That's gonna stick in this economy, you can't afford to lose a fresh sniper like that as Pure Delight tosses it off the side of the map. And now the only sniper is the one that Devlin just stole off of the dead body of Dami Domes. Six rounds in the sniper, three minutes on the clock, and one capture down. What can Devlin do with this damage from the sniper needing to hit some shots to clutch up for the team? Chain Chomp is all the way back at the sniper spawn at the top of the last three players there. One player has extended to mid, and Devlin barely misses on the cleanup shots. He might get some wind of this player. It's absent at the mid map who got the early damage. Devlin here, so crucial that they stay alive. It's such an important role with that sniper needing a score, but no, they go down. Two go down for living rent free. Now absent picks up that sniper rifle bottom mid. Camo up in 25. So this is going to be a good time on the map to get that round of slays. Set yourself up for that mid-map control, camo control. And you can potentially tie it here if you're living rent-free. 2-2 two, two, tie in the feed. Numbers advantage. Not there for either team. 
But the advantage is going to be there for one of these two teams. Whoever can grab control of these snipers. There's a camo up top. This is a crucial point in the map with the sandbox. Two minutes left. This is it for Living Rent Free. Yeah, barring sudden death, this is the last round of camo and sniper. So a crucial turning point in the final two minutes. And it's PD versus Benjo. PD gets the kill. Pure Delight stays alive. Burns that last round of the sniper. And look at the sniper control. You already saw the body shot coming through from Chain Chop. You're just keeping the defensive line held. That's going to be tough to do against Slang Wayne. Slang Wayne is getting kill after kill to hold that mid ground, but there's a flag on the moon. And it's not uh -oh. for Living Run Free. It's Chain Chop with the insurance capture on the way. No way. And you, you can see the players there furiously just pinging anything they could, hoping that the camo was oh, no. in the crosshairs. Oh, but game. no, instead, it's a flag in for Chain Chop. Unbelievable. The objective efficiency continues for them. And it was the camo that won the game. That camo pull from Dami and not using it to play defense says, why not extend our lead to two in a minute on the clock? It would take a miracle back-to-back -back flag runs just for living rent-free to get to the sudden death timer, to get to overtime. The strikers putting forth the effort, trying to make it happen. Trading out a kill is not enough. Living rent-free are running out of time. 40 seconds on the clock and not much in the hands of this pure delight or excuse me of this living rent free roster to come back is pure delight and chain chomp have this one all but wrapped up in full control needing one last set of slays to put the technicality on this one as i'd say it's already wrapped yeah. up but i agree just uh finding ways to add a couple more kills assists, and deaths to the final counters we have 15 seconds left to go chain chomp secure game three with the objective efficiency once again just like we saw in game one and have a 2-1 lead because of it in this series this sound a little bit like a broken record but it's the assist count yet again every player on chain wow. chomp in double digits and you compare that or contrast rather to live in rent free where the most assist was nine double digits versus single digits that team fire that was missing in game number two somehow chain chomp found it in game number three the swing game to take the lead two to one in the series well, this is so interesting now because it's playing out the way we sort of teed up in the sense that we expect chain chop to win the obj's based on the efficiency we've seen from them and we expect yeah. living red free to win the slayers based on the slaying proficiency we saw them from them however they're not going to get to a game five if they can't win one objective and then if we do get to that game five it heavily favors living rent free but i i don't know magic this chain shop squad has looked too good too strong too focused on the objective to go down i don't know what the next uh, next objective game type is but i gotta lean heavily into this chain chomp roster because not only do they have the objective efficiency this last game but take a look at the scoreboard as well plus five yeah. plus three plus one minus so that's an overall net positive actually there in that scenario even even with the objective efficiency we've seen from them all they need to do is just go net neutral right <laughs> to uh to yeah. have the scores that they need as we see that there as uh they put in that first score on the board in that game but this is a this is an interesting series that's really teed up based on the objective proficiency of one team and the slaying proficiency yes. of the other Ooh, look right here okay this is the point i wanted to talk about because you shouted out dami as the player to watch this play getting the capture it's not going to add to your kill count which it was actually absent leading the way with 22 at the end of the game but dami gave up the slays in order to get the game winning capture across the map some beautiful plays there from chain shop and they're hoping to lock down this series right here but it's king of the hill on live fire striker watch out sniper in hand ready to give some oversight to the overshield run where Devlin might make a breakthrough. Look at Vic. Vic didn't check his corners and Stryker is lurking right behind him with the sniper at the ready. Oh, but don't look now. It's objective efficiency for living red free as they grab the first king of the hill. They grab the first overshield. What a surprising start to this game as it's now yeah. living red free who's flipping the script. The script has been flipped and I think every game you have to come in with a fresh perspective. It's a new map, it's a new mode. Get back in the fight. That's what we're seeing from Living Rent Free. They're bouncing right back after a tough game free loss. And it's Striker Snipe. hitting the headshot double for the kill. snipe for the double kill. Living Rent Free should be able to get half or more of this hill captured. Sniper in the hands of Striker, but you see he's a little 
too far to the left there had a little too much of an opening because of the goes down now gives this sniper to little vic and it's not going to take long for little vic to make a big play with it potentially as he looks to take down two able to take down one now the big play is just staying alive with it as little vic has one hp and a dream look at this rotation he's gonna get the backs of living rent free because of this smart play pushing through top mid back to cuts back to the screen door now little vic should be able to make a play because of it and that's the comms he knew there was a weak player so he switches to the br holding on to the rest of that sniper ammo Chain Chomp have got some time on the hill, but it's Lil Vic and the rest of Chain Chomp that are putting the chase onto Striker. Striker gets a kill though before being taken down, actually trades out. So numbers advantage right back to live in rent free. They have this hill about two thirds of the way captured. Another round of slays and they get that first hill on the board, but it's PD with the double kill. PD with the overshield and now numbers advantage has completely flipped. And yeah, that's wild because it was three that went down for Chain Chomp. Despite that, they get one up and it's pure delight who's able to grab that overshield. Will they be able to use this to get back in this one as living rent free has built a considerable lead on that first hill needing just seconds to collapse and score their first hill dommy domes looking to anchor there at the nest play some Woo! strong defense pure delight doing the same but at the pillar side and now you have two in the back of green repulsor in the hands of pure delight he might send him off the map instead sends him back to the respawn screen with that heat wave as slim and red free is looking good to potentially score this but no that's a huge slay on the heat wave little vic makes a massive play now the numbers come in for living red free and absent tries to stay alive but he goes down last player alive is dommy domes living red free should be able to put the finishing touches but he makes a huge last play last player alive play and now living rent free has a little bit of room to score but just like that pure delight is right back on it no time to breathe only halo pd off the respawn prioritizing that objective chain chop has been the objective team throughout but it's the sniper in the hands of slaying wayne that's gonna find the pick striker finds a pick as well this hill is nearly tied and it's being contested a little bit on the other side the body shot comes through the assist comes through is there anyone from chain chop that can contest it looks like that's oh. gonna be done and dusted hill number one what a fight that was to the very final second and, and that might have looked like just a, like a, whatever an errant repulsor but I, I that repulsor seemed to line up with the scoring of that hill so without that repulsor to deflect damage i don't believe living rent free get that first hill it may have it have been an eventuality they might have eventually gotten it but they get it right then and there because of the well-timed repulsor play and now because of it get to rotate to snipe tower and have a look on overshield they go down in snipe tower but dev somehow is able to grab overshield so living rent free is doing a great job hedging their bets here if they don't get one thing they always seem to come up with another Devlin is double coming up with kill. a double kill. Burns all the ammo from that heat wave, but it's a well spent to get the kills. Still half of the overshield left to work with. Three players from Chain Chop rotating through. And now all four are stockpiling. It looks like they're trying to not, you know, vending machine style, send one at a time. They're really trying to get that team force, but the defensive line from Live and Rent Free is holding strong. One player breaks through, it's absent, taken down. Now Devlin caught in the middle of a reload is gonna cost him his life. But look how much time has already been won on this hill. Two thirds, now three quarters won by Live and Rent Free and slaying Wayne at the top of the tower. It has to be the priority target because he has oversight for the whole map. And this is a lot like what that first hill looked like, but Chain Chomp was able to bring it back to a, a feverish, almost tie at the 99-99 mark on that first hill. This second hill, though, going easily in favor of Living Rent Free as Chain Chomp have that early rotation on the A side of the map. So they're going to get the first few points on the board for this third hill, needing to make it a 2-1 game because now Magic with the scoreboard, if it gets to 3-0, it's likely going to be at less than three minutes on the clock that almost makes this that almost makes it with that with uh, uh with it almost takes it out of range for this chain shop nice. roster to come back at a 3-0 minus three minutes i don't see it happening so this is the game winning hill right here this is the hill to score if you're chain shop because you don't if you don't it might be over and they're they're really prioritizing the hill they're getting those slays in order to hold it down and the the fact the the fact that you bring up the clock it's because of that first hill a lot of time was spent on hill number one both teams had it at about the 90 percent maybe even 95 percent mark and pd with a nice little spin move i tell you what that's a beautiful play to get the 360 heat wave takedown but even more beautiful if it turns into this capture wow. to get chain chopped right back in this match with almost no time spent
and just as easily as Livin' Rick Free scored the second hill, it's Chain Chomp answering right back with another hill of their own and another overshield as well. It's been a strong string of overshield possession for them. That's been one of the reasons why they've been able to bring it back. Nice takedown. Little Vic might have been the objective player in the last game. Right now is the slain leader. But if you do the eye check, it's still Levin rent free with the advantage in the kills. Slain Wayne has been overall the team assister with 11, but now getting some kills with the use of the sniper rifle. A big breakthrough here for Living Rent Free. They want to force a game five. Look at the overextension there through cuts. As Striker finds another kill, Benjo Stark, that lead slayer from game number one, is now being the objective player. A little bit of a shift in responsibility for Living Rent Free. And the last four to six minutes have been really dominated uh, on that Chain Chomp side as it relates to Overshield. Now with that hill being on the Overshield side, you have to imagine if Chain Chomp just copy pastes that strategy for this hill, they should be able to not only find themselves a hill, but another yeah. Overshield to work with, potentially off the rotation for a, a fifth and final hill. Oh, this the one's adding up to a potential thriller of a finish. Living rent free back against the wall, needing this one to stay alive in the upper bracket side of this tournament. Looking good with a 2-1 lead, but it's Chain Chop mounting a furious comeback. Did you say this is, this is stacking up to be a thriller? Like the, the zombie dances? Something like that. Let's see if anybody pops back from the grave here as Chain Chop are just seconds away from tying up wow. the hills. And they did, they clutched it up. Two quick captures for Living Ren Free, answered by two quick captures. Chain Chomp are not ready to let this go to a game five. And just remember, game five is Slayer, and the last Slayer was a decisive win from Living Ren Free. This is the time for Chain Chomp. If they want to keep that 2 1 advantage, they need to lock up the series right here, but it's going to be tough with players like Devlin. 20 kills and the Overshield on the hunt for more slays. Finds Little Vic in the back of B, and even with a difficult angle, lines up the BR shots for the perfect kill possession of that overshield falling back into the hands of living rent free and so too is the lead on this hill living rent free at the quarter mark and devlin has two players pushing out of a but that's a great use of the numbers there from little vic as he takes down the overshield and now has chain chomp in a position to stop the scoring for living rent free look at this a continuous string of 75 percent wanted to see little vic rotate for the plasma grenades there at cuts but instead just full set right into the waning br fire of striker and look at striker now doing laps on the map taking down kill after kill as living red free get that third capture the only thing working for chain chomp right now is the fact that they still have time to work with the last two hills have been captured quickly the last three even yeah this is wild when we were talking about the three two finish now this is yeah. Maybe going to be a 4-3 game as there is plenty of time left on the clock for each of these two teams. Strategically, that means that Living Rent Free is going to want to play for hill time here. We've seen even some of the best teams in the world, Magic, make the mistake in this situation where they start to play a little too defensively or even offensively when the strategy calls for the other. Curious to see how Living Rent Free responds with the lead 3-2, but it's not the safe variety. Chain Chomp are coming back once again. Dami Dome's fifth Teen assists and 14 slays. Heat wave and repulsor at the ready. The attention shifting to overshield. Devlin is the first one in the repulsor. Oh. Sends it back. He gets a return to center. Blind fire through the shroud screen. A huge play. Great medals. Double even more kill. pivotal because that means that Chain Chop are winning the overshield. Look at the time on the hill. All the fight at overshield meant that Chain Chop were still getting objective time and now about five seconds away from tying up the game. Striker is the last alive for Living Red Free. Team Fire is going out. Devlin secures a kill. Devlin gets a double, but PD clears out the back Reversal. of Mutt. This fight is not over. Wow, and that was six, maybe seven players Killing going down three. on the overshield side. All the while, Chain Chop continue chopping back into this lead. Ooh. Coming back with a vengeance. Now tied 3-3. Three, three. Two minutes left on the clock. Magic, this is absolutely going to be a match that reaches the final score. Oh my gosh. Here the lights make me nervous dancing on that rail, but he knows what he's doing. He stays on the map. He stays alive. He stays out of fire. Gets some damage on the striker, but there's a player from Living Rent Free rotating around the back of tower. I believe it's Devlin who's going to peek out at elbow. Dami Domes takes a fight here at Dummy Door. Takes down one. Gets a burst onto Slang. 
if it's Devlin on that wraparound play, on that uh, surprising flank play, but he catches the plasma pistol. Pure Delight's not letting the series out of his grasp. Pure Delight, they call him PD because you might just want to call for some help if you see him <laughs> as he gives hands to two players for living red free, opens up a little bit of that scoring for Chain Chomp is absent, has his foot in it, but momentarily fights on the dummies. Two there on the living rent free squad. They're gonna take advantage of the numbers now, collapsing back into the hill. This is a crucial battle for this hill. Yeah. Chain Chop now with their first lead on a hill. This is starting to flip the script a little bit. This is what it looked like for living rent free for most of these hills. Can Chain Chomp finish? Need to finish the fight. Every round of slays might double be the deciding kill. factor as Absent picks up a double kill, picks up the heat wave. It's a 1v1, make it a 1v2, gets the assist onto one, a little damage on the next, and it's Little Vic. The overshield might be the tipping point. Do Chain Chomp come back in this game to lock in the series? They were down zero to two, and look at them now with a slight advantage on the hill, but even more importantly, the numbers advantage, the overshield advantage. Wayne is back off from that plasma grenade, and Vic cleans up a crucial kill. He's last alive, though. Living Red Free are in for the collapse, and oh. they get the takedown. Three down, last player alive for Chain Chomp. His striker has points in the hill, and I actually really like Little Vic staying in the hill there with Overshield. Yes. You'd usually like to see a player push out, but because all of the push was coming to him, he just st stood in the hill, got a couple extra slays and time. Because of it, Chain Chomp is just seconds away from winning this game. Oh, but don't look now, Living Red Free is two. Little Vic with a clutch kill. Could put the finishing touches on this game as three go down, four go down for Living Red Free. And that'll do it. The upset here in round one as Chain Chomp advance. Little Vic making the big plays for that final hill capture as Last Alive milked some time on the clock and then off of respawn. The double assist and the kill to clear off the objective. And that's it. That's Chain Chomp moving forward, not giving it up for a game five slayer. They locked in the objective place. It was a double assist, double kill. Little Vic was part of all four slays on the final push. Yeah, and I love I love this especially for Little Vic because he's only plus one, had the least amount of assists on his team, so you're probably like, oh, uh, BG. But no, GG for Little Vic, because when the time <laughs> came for him to make a play, it was only plus one, but it was that one extra slay at the end that won the game for Chain Chop, showing exactly why stats don't always tell the whole story. What an epic comeback. Big congrats to Chain Chomp. That number 71 seed, I believe we had 90 teams overall, and Chain Chomp are moving forward from, from winner's round run. They're, they're staying in the upper bracket, and uh, they, have, they have quite the um, opposition coming up in front of them, but they have earned the right to take on some of the best teams because of that round.